Allah Jalla Jalaluhu said, Inna Allah ya'murukum an tu'addu al-amanati ila ahliha. Allah instructs you that you are to return the amana, the trusts, to the rightful owners of those trusts. The scholars of tafsir are almost agreed that the verse that you just heard from Surah An-Nisa was revealed in the context of the conquest of Mecca. And he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam entered the city of Mecca and one of the very first things he did was that he took the keys of the Kaaba from Uthman ibn Talha and he handed the keys over to Al-Abbas ibn Abdul Muttalib and in another narration to Ali ibn Abi Talib. And the moment he walked inside of the Kaaba to pray, Allah revealed the verse that you just heard. Allah instructs you to give back the trusts to their owners. So he came out of the Kaaba and he called for Uthman ibn Talha and he gave him back the key. And he said, take your key back, O Uthman. This is Allah's instruction. Today is the day of loyalty and righteousness. Our Prophet Wasallam's life was defined by the upholding of amana, the restoring of trusts to their owners. He was an ameen, a trustworthy individual. He advocated it, he called towards it, applied it, and he told us that one of the signs of the day of judgment will be people will lose amana. The trusts will be abused. And that is why Bukhari narrates on the authority of Abu Hurairah that the Prophet ﷺ was once sat with his companions speaking to them. And an Arab Bedouin man came in and interrupted the speech and he said, when is the day of judgment? He wants a date. And so some of the companions, they said, he heard the question, but he didn't like it. That's why he hasn't answered. Other companions, they said, he didn't hear the question. And when he finished his speech, he said, where is the man who inquired about the day of judgment? The Bedouin said, here I am. And he said to him, when the aman, the trusts are lost, then wait for the day of judgment. That will be a sign. What is aman? Abu Ali, he said, al amana is the prohibitions and the obligations of Islam. al Hasan al-Basri, he said, al amana is the religion of Islam. Because the whole religion is but an amana, a trust. al amana is something that moves with you when you move. It stays with you when you stay put. It creeps into every one of the departments of life and will bring with it a question on the day of judgment. Your family members, my dear brothers, it's not just a privilege and an enjoyment, it is primarily an amana, a trust, and there will be a question about it, يوم القيامة. يا أيها الذين آمنوا قوا أنفسكم وأهليكم نارا. Allah said, O oh, you who believe, protect yourselves and your families from the hellfire. It's an amana. Your husband, my dear sister, is an amana, a trust from Allah that shall be asked on the day of judgment. And that's why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to the auntie of Hussein Ibn Mihsan when he said to her, are you married? She said, yes. He said, how do you behave with him? She said, I try to give him everything he needs as much as I can. He said to her, be very careful how you are with your husband because after all, he will be your paradise or your hellfire. It's an amana. Your employees who work for you, they are an amana, a trust, and there will be a question about them the day of judgment. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, give the employee his wage before the sweat on his forehead has a chance to dry. Give him his wage, don't delay. It's an amana. Your time, dear users of the internet and social media, your time is an amana and there will be a question. And that's why when the people of Jahannam are roasting and they will beg for a second chance, Allah will say to them, أَوَلَمْ نُعَمِّرْكُمْ مَا يَتَذَكَّرُ فِيهِ مَنْ تَذَكَّرُ Did we not give you lives long enough? Did we not give you time such that if you wanted to benefit, you could have remembered? Time is an amana. Your private parts, your desires, your lusts, it is an amana, a trust. And there will be a question about it on the day of judgment. And that is why in some narrations attributed to Abdullah ibn Umar that when Allah Almighty created the private part, he said, this is an amana that I have hidden with you. So beware of using it except where permissible. The hijab is an amana. The Quran is an amana. Mum and dad, they are an amana. Your healthy limbs, your sight, your hearing, even your thoughts, they are an amana. Inna sam'a wal basara wal fu'ada. Kullu ula'ika kana anhu mas'ula. Allah said, your hearing and your seeing and even your heart, there will be a question about them all on the day of judgment. There is another amana, trust, that many Muslims are complaining 
of an inability to honor it. An amana which they say we are betraying several times a day and we don't know how to stop. It. This is the trust of access. In the 21st century, you are able to access a sin that our fathers and great-grandfathers needed to go to great lengths to access. For a moment, I shift your attention to an ayah. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu aw yuhu believe. لَيَبْلُوَنَّكُمُ اللَّهُ بِشَيْءٍ مِّنَ الصَّيْرِ تَنَالُهُ أَيْدِيكُمْ وَرِمَاحُكُمْ لِيَعْلَمَ اللَّهُ مَنْ يَخَافُهُ بِالْغَيْبِ Allah is going to test you with some of the game animal, meaning the land animal that is hunted for food, that your hands and your spears can reach, so that Allah may know or may make clear who fears him in the unseen. What does this mean? The scholars have said that this ayah was revealed in context of some companions who are in a state of ihram, in a state of pilgrimage. And you know when you are in a state of ihram, one of the things that you cannot do is hunt the land animal for food. So they were there in ihram and they were walking when all of a sudden animals that were usually so difficult to hunt gathered around the companions. They were beneath their feet and bearing in mind the hunger of the companions and their poverty for the most part. Not a single one of the sahaba reached out to one of those animals despite their need. Why did Allah test them in this way? The verse said, so that Allah may make clear who fears him in the unseen. And you will say to me today in the 21st century, just 50 years ago, it was impossible to communicate with a member of the opposite gender without so much planning and hard work. Today, what do you need? You need an 11 digit number. You need a social media profile name. And lo and behold, you have 24 access of unfettered communication to him or to her. And who is looking? No one other than Allah. You will say, why? Why has our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed this test? Why is it that my child is able to access all of the ideologies of the world from within the confines of his own home. All of the social perversions and all of the fetishes of people in the East and West, they see it in their mobiles and their computers. Why would my Lord allow this type of test in my home and the home of the Muslims? And the answer is the same as what you just heard in the verse. لِيَعْلَمْ اللَّهُ مَنْ يَخَافُهُ بِالْغَيْبِ So that Allah may make clear who are the ones who fear him in the unseen. The fear that came into your heart, my dear brother, when the wind started to move the curtains of your door, when you were committing your sin, fearing that someone has caught you, that fear is greater and worse in the eyes of Allah than the sin itself. That fear should have been for Allah. Beware of being an ally, a friend of Allah in public, but an enemy of Allah in private. This is a contradiction in the personality of a Muslim. And whilst people may not discover this contradiction today in you, it will be discovered on the day of judgment if it is not fixed today. And that is why Ibn Majah narrates on the authority of Thawban that the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, I know people from my nation, he said, who will come on the day of judgment with mountains of good deeds. Allahu Akbar. And Allah will deck them one after the other. He will make them into rubble, nothing, worthless, scattered dust. So the narrator Thawban, he said, Messenger of Allah described them to us. Just in case we are the people amassing all of these good deeds and they will be nothing on the day of judgment. What do they look like? He said, they are your brothers. They're from your race. And they even pray at night the same way you pray. The problem is that they were a people whom when they were alone, they would step over the limits of Allah. What do we do from here? Some of you will say, my hair is standing on end. What do I do to uphold this amana of access to sin? I will suggest three things. Number one, a wholesome retreat to the book of Allah. To recite the Quran with tadabbu, with contemplation. Number two, ensure that you worship Allah privately where no one can see you. Give yourself a portion of private one-to-one -one ibadah, even if it is a minute a day. Ibn al-Qayyim, he said, the sins that people do when they are alone is the main reason why people go astray later on in life. And he said, similarly, the good deeds that you do when you are alone will be a main reason why you will stay steadfast upon the religion. Lastly, and my final message, connect yourself to something that is bigger than you. Work towards an Islamic vision, project that is bigger than your mirror reflection, your career ambitions, your wage, and your health and fitness. Connect yourself to a large Islamic goal and work towards it. And watch how automatically most of these whisperings will be evicted from your life.
In my short experience, I have seen brothers and sisters who are constantly dipping in and out of haram, observing that which is haram, communicating, moving in and out of relationships, exploring different drugs, using different applications, doing strange things to their body. Most of the times, it's because they are bored. So they need to find something to fill that emptiness. Whereas the people of high aspirations like you, they are far too busy to be slowed down by these fetishes and these whisperings. The glow of their objective that they follow is so bright that it has eclipsed every other satanic whispering. They make mistakes and they slip, but when they do, they stand up again. They say, Astaghfirullah, and they have a North Star that they are following. They know the path that they need to be on. Connect yourself to something that is bigger than your dunya.